I'll now hand it off to Girish. You can get us started. Thank you, Girish. If we can confirm, you can see my screen, uh, the deck I'm sharing, and you can hear me. Yes, I can see your screen and hear you. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Welcome everyone to AVD Immersion Day event uh, on behalf of Ingram Micro Cloud team from US and Canada. I'd like to say thank you. We really appreciate everybody taking time of their busy schedule and joining this because these sessions won't be possible without your support and participation. My name is Giri Sharma and I'm Azure Solution Engineer based out of Mississauga, Canada. Uh, also joining me in the call, I believe Chuck is also there from the US team. So thank you, Chuck, for being on the call. Uh, this is a multi-day event. Today is day one uh, of this immersion day in which we're going to focus on the business case scenario and how we can position AVD for your customer base. Uh, tomorrow we'll be uh, concentrating more on the design and uh, the sizing followed by day three, which is a full day affair in which the solution architects, they will be deploying uh, all the components that are needed to make the solution work on uh, Azure. So these are going to be hands-on lab, and it's an eight hour session, I think starting from 9 a.m. and uh, it will go up to 5 p.m. Talking about the agenda, this is how the flow is going to be today. Uh, we'll start with a brief introduction, followed by business strategy. Then we'll go a little bit deep onto the AVD, giving you the overview and uh, some of the new features and functionalities that has been added. Then we'll also look at the security component of uh, Azure and why it is critical. Uh, finally, looking at uh, what different customer scenarios we can align uh, Azure Virtual Desktop and how we can provide desktop as a service by utilizing AVD. And uh, we're going to close this off uh, with a brief demo and how the end user experience will be when they are trying to access these applications deployed in Azure Virtual Desktop. And I'll try to keep it simple. Uh, I know that uh, we have kept aside well, one hour. You. Uh, I have kept aside uh, Sorry, uh, I just hear the background sound. I, uh, so I was saying that we have kept aside one hour for this, but hopefully it won't take. As I said that, I want to keep it simple and concise so that uh, we are able to convey the messaging that we want to do with this event. So let's start with the introduction. So this is the second uh, event that we're doing in the last couple of months, and based on the overwhelming response that we got, the idea behind this event is that we want to give you better understanding of where the business opportunity lies with this virtual desktop infrastructure deployed in Azure. Uh, with these hands-on lab that we're going to do with your solution architect, we want to give you hands-on experience so that they have all the technical expertise so that they are comfortable with the uh, cloud technology and terminology, specifically with Azure Virtual Desktop. You might be dealing with different uh, vertical markets. You have a different customer scenarios, so you want to make sure that we are also able to adhere to those requests. So we're going to talk about that uh, later on in the slides today. And you might be already doing virtual desktop implementation and how it aligns with Azure and cloud in general. So we'll see that. The idea being that we want to accelerate uh, your cloud adoption by using AVD deployment, and we'll see how we can enhance that solution and concept why, uh, through these uh, uh, sessions. Now, if you're an ISV and uh, if you have some custom solution that you're already using to deploy virtual desktop infrastructure, and you don't want to talk in specific for these uh, session, I will say leave that to the one on one session that we're going to do. So after these three days are over, the sales team is going to reach out to you and we're going to schedule a one on one session because we do understand that uh, different customer scenarios uh, requires uh, different expertise so we can dig deep into those one on one sessions. So if you want to just talk in general, about those ISV solution that you might be having. So uh, you can do that, but we'll get deep into those one-on-one -on -one session that we're going to schedule uh, after these three days are over. And I always say that uh, this is a marathon. Any cloud adoption is 
totally different from a typical on-prem deployment or on-prem business that we are used to. And we are there in every step from sales, from technical expertise, from deployment. If you need our help and white label the services, we are there for you. So this is just the beginning and this is just the start. And uh, as he said that uh, we will be supporting you uh, which are way possible from Ingram Micro Cloud team. Uh, we are there to help you, support you, deploy you through the session and also in the future that we'll be doing. So at this time, if uh, we can have a brief introduction, so in the chat box, if you can put your role and name and uh, optionally uh, one thing that you want to learn from this session that will be great so that we have better understanding of the audience so i'm just going to pause for uh, for a minute or so so that everybody can get time to just put the things in the chat box the introduction i may not be able to see it but uh, some of the team members they will be but that will be good for our uh, future sessions that we'll be doing All right, uh, hopefully uh, that was enough time to put your information uh, in the chat. So let's move. And any deployment, whether it's on-prem, hybrid, or in the cloud, start with customer in mind. And Azure Virtual Desktop is no different. So we need to have a better understanding of uh, what customer problem uh, we are trying to solve with this uh, virtual desktop infrastructure deployment. You might be dealing with a customer who are uh, specially aligned to different industry, whether it's uh, health or regulated industry. And based on that, they might be having certain uh, problem that they are looking at cloud to solve that. So we need to address that. We need to find out what actual critical issues that they're facing and how ABD can help them uh, to solve that problem. Now, because your data is going to reside in the cloud, we also need to be aware of uh, what geographies these customers they cater to. Because as we know that uh, we have multiple regions and you can deploy these services in a different data center. But uh, if you are not able to get the uh, good experience from the customer point of view, and if they're not getting the applications and their performance, we can talk about uh, how cloud is good, how scalable it is. If they're not getting the right experience, I think it's not going to provide them the uh, value that the cloud is generally known for. So it's very important we understand what geographies, whether it's in European Union, North America, or any specific region that they cater to. And based on that, we can provide the solution to them. And also it is critical to understand what is the size of the company. You might be dealing with small, medium to enterprise customer, which have a user base of uh, maybe 10 to 10,000. That's the solution that we are trying to provide is scalable. So it's critical that uh, uh, we also have understanding of that one so that uh, when the time comes, we are able to scale up, scale down as per the customer requirement. Once we have a better understanding of uh, what our customer base is and what problem we are trying to solve for them through ABD, then we'll need to look into what are the components which are required to make the solution work in cloud. That's why it is critical this session is important from the sales perspective. So you want to give you all the ammunition that is needed so that you can have that conversation from the business perspective. So for that, if you need to have maybe an AZ 900, which is a uh, fundamental certification. Uh, we are there to provide you with that too. Ingram Micro runs different sessions from sales, from technical expertise, uh, so you can make advantage of that one. But we want to make sure that we have those components in-house to deliver those services. Now for that, if we have to collaborate maybe with third party, uh, just to point out here is that Ingram Micro also has in-house expertise. You can make use of professional services, circle of excellence, which are there for you to be leveraged. And the good thing is that you can white label those services. But our idea is that we want to give you all the expertise from sales and technical standpoint so that you can deliver that messaging, deploy those solutions, 
And if required, you can also white label those services so that you can provide end to end solution. And once we have that components in place, I think confidently we can uh, uh, provide these solution for our customer base. And based on the deployments that we have done and the conversation we have been at, uh, having with our customer base, there are three stages to any deployment and they are assess, deploy and manage. Now, any cloud conversation, as I said, that it is different from on-prem deployment. The reason being that uh, the way we have uh, seen uh, customer already have, they have on-prem infrastructure and they want to have some sort of hybrid solution. And it is not feasible just to tear down their on-prem infrastructure. And generally, a cloud conversation will start. And by the time we deploy this, on an average, we have seen that it is three to four months of timeline. So there are a lot of patience needed, and assessment is going to be a critical component in any of those uh, conversation. And for those assessment, you can use Azure native services such as Azure Migrate, or maybe third-party solutions such as Lakeside, Block 64, or maybe you have developed your own solution in-house solution that you can uh, you, you can utilize. But assessment is going to be critical component because we want to make sure that uh, those solutions that we're going to deploy on Azure, they are cost effective, they uh, meet the application requirement, and they're easily mobile in case you already have application which is running, we should be able to virtualize that and deploy that in a customized format and which is more relatable with Azure Virtual Desktop deployment. And once that assessment takes place, the next uh, transition will be deployment. So we need to have the expertise uh, to deploy these solution. It can be through your technical team or you can leverage Ingram Micro team. Uh, but for that, you can use a native tool or you may be already collaborating with some third party solutions such as Nerdy or Citrix but uh, deployment is going to be critical after we have done the assessment. And after this step, the next transition will be the management. Like any deployment, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, we need to manage those resources. The monitoring is going to be critical, but that's going to be the other uh, critical component with any uh, deployment in Azure. And any desktop as a service that we're going to talk about in the future, will align in one of these steps, whether it's assessment, deployment, or management. And the idea behind this session is that uh, we should be able to provide this in-house, any of these services related to all these three stages. Now let's look at uh, Azure Virtual Desktop. But before I look into Azure Virtual Desktop, I just want to uh, take a minute here explaining about the virtualization. Now, one thing that uh, pandemic has taught us uh, is that, you know, we just can't treat our application and our workforce the way we have been treating it traditionally. Uh, we know that a lot of companies went out of business because uh, the application were not available uh, for users to be consumed. And uh, the user were not able to go to those head office and branch offices because of the pandemic situation. So it's important that we have those solutions in place so that user will be able to access these resources from anywhere, whether it's from their home or they have to have a hybrid deployment. And most importantly, we are now dealing with different uh, regulated industry, which has specific requirements. So if we are making these uh, applications to be used from anywhere in the world, for example, they want to use it from the house or from maybe from coffee shop, we should have specific security components in place. So virtualization is going to help us to achieve that. And if they want to use it, maybe bring their own devices. Uh, we need to enroll them maybe in a specific Microsoft services so that it is compliant and as per the security requirements, specifically for these uh, security and regulated industry. And on top of that, uh, you might come across some specific uh, niche workloads for example, if you're dealing with manufacturing industry in which they have to deal a lot with solid works or, or AutoCAD drying, we need to be able to deploy these resources, spin up and spin down, and virtualization is going to play a critical part in that one so that we're not using those resources 24 seven, because as you know that uh, in cloud, you are charged for how long these services are running. We should be able to scale it, scale down, 
and also keep in mind uh, off peak and uh, peak time so that we can adjust it and automate those resources as per the requirement. So virtualization uh, solves a lot of problems and uh, with AVD, everything is virtualized and we're going to dig deep more into that in the coming slides. So Azure Virtual Desktop in simple term is nothing but a computer in the cloud. Now you can enable this as a full desktop, so you can give this as a full desktop, uh, which is there and give access to the user, or you can enable this as specific applications only. The good thing is that everything is managed through one interface through Azure portal, through portal.azure.com. And uh, as compared to that, we do deploy these services on-prem, this can be deployed within minutes. There is infrastructure in place for you, and you just need to spin those. Obviously, we need to have uh, proper policies and uh, uh, security in place so that no unauthorized people are deploying these resources from the cost perspective. But these infrastructure is there for you, which can be enabled as a full desktop or only as a remote application. And all the management, as I said, is done through one interface, so you don't need to flip between and go between different interface. And this can be scaled up and scaled down as per the requirement. Automation is critical with any cloud deployment and AVD is not different. And as I mentioned, uh, we are charged for how long these services are running in the cloud. And uh, Azure provides you all the automation capabilities. You can, uh, uh, you can run the run books in this one so that uh, you're not consuming these resources out of your peak time and scale down as per the requirement. So Azure Virtual Desktop basically can be deployed in any region in the world. We have around about 60 plus region, and uh, we will make sure that it is deployed closest to your area so that your user get the best experience. Now with any AVD deployment, there are two cost components to that. One is the Azure compute cost, which includes your storage, the VM node that you're choosing, and other is the licensing cost that you see on the screen. And the chances are a lot of customers that we have conversation with, they have already adopted maybe Microsoft 365. They're using maybe E3, E5, or even business premium licensing. And the Good thing is that uh, your Windows 10 multi-session under the client category already comes with that. So if you're not using these benefits of Azure Virtual Desktop, then you're losing on uh, the licensing that you might be already having. So there are two ways you can deploy these things. You can deploy this with a Windows 10 multi-session and you can do it with a server operating system. And if you want to deploy this with a Windows 10 multi-session, these are the licenses which you need on the list there. And if you want with the server operating system, the only other licensing that you'll be needing is uh, RDS scale licensing with software assurance. And this blend with all the uh, latest features and technologies, which also enhances on top of Azure Virtual Desktop, which Microsoft 365 provides, like for example, Azure AD Premium 1 and Premium 2, which is already part of some of the, some of the licensing that you might be having, such as the uh, Enterprise Mobility and Security Suite, like E3 and E5. Azure Virtual Desktop ecosystem is ever growing, right? And this is uh, this shows how much confidence that uh, the partners are showing, which can leverage this for managing and deploying these resources. Some of these partners you might be already using, for example, Supajo. You're using maybe uh, Print Logic for printing services, Nerdy for management perspective. Uh, but this shows how much confidence that uh, this service is showing, which you can use to deploy your hardware to deploy a security implementation for management and monitoring capabilities. Uh, so, and this uh, ecosystem is growing. Uh, and uh, I would recommend that if you're using some of these uh, our partners, uh, we all already work at Ingram Micro. So definitely you can leverage and you want more information on any of these partners, you can definitely reach out to our sales team and they will be happy to uh, schedule a call with any of the partner that you'll be interested on the list. Let's talk about ABD a little bit on a deeper level. So if you can see on the right hand uh, top of the screen, 
uh, any Azure deployment start with a subscription. And a subscription is nothing but a billing construct. You might have heard about the CSP cloud solution provider or NCE, a new commerce experience. It is nothing but a type of uh, subscription. And uh, in the subscription, you have resources and your resources are uh, your compute node, your storage and your networking. And depending upon the services you're choosing, there are certain things which are controlled by Microsoft and there are certain responsibilities that you as a user will have to uh, manage. And that is what you see under managed by Microsoft. So services such as uh, brokering services, load balancing gateway is uh, taken care by Microsoft for you. But uh, the infrastructure or the host pool that you're going to deploy, such as compute or the storage that you'll be using is taken care by you. And it fully integrates with your on-prem infrastructure if you're already having. So if you see on the left side of the screen, if you have on-prem environment, you can connect it by using site-to-site uh, -site VPN connectivity or through Express Route for which there are different tiers. And you can use Azure Active Directory for authentication services. And you might be already having uh, certain services in place such as System Center Configuration Manager or Intune, which is a mobile device management tool, uh, which you can uh, integrate with your AVD. And the way AVD is deployed, it can be used with any kind of billing system and from any interface. So you might be using all the uh, Android operating system or iOS devices. Uh, AVD can be accessed from any of these whether it's Windows or Linux or through HTML5, which I'm going to show you later in the demo. This can be uh, managed and used from any of these uh, 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 interfaces. But this is on a high level, the architecture going to be, and whether you want to deploy this in cloud native uh, solution by using cloud native services, you can do that too. Or if you want to integrate with your on-prem environment, you can integrate that by using SFS route or VPN connectivity. So the cloud is always evolving as always changing and uh, Azure Virtual Desktop is not different. When this services came into existence like two, some two years ago, it was all PowerShell heavy, but now it is a first party services and part of the Azure Resource Manager. What does that mean is that you can manage everything from the Azure portal. Now, rather than assigning and giving access to your desktop and specific application to a specific users, you can give and assign access uh, based on the grouping within Azure Active Directory, so make the management much more easier. And uh, there are different automation tools that you can use it. Uh, I know a lot of customers, they use PowerShell scripting to deploy these solution, but you can use command line interface. You can also restrict who has access to the portal, so there are different role-based access control you can assign based on the job profile a customer has. You can go and uh, uh, assign them access based on the owner, contributor, and the reader. And uh, based on their job description, you can restrict what they can do on the Azure portal. But now it is a first party service and everything can be controlled through the Azure portal. As I mentioned earlier, there are multiple regions where you can deploy this AVD services. And uh, you can deploy this maybe in US or Canada if you want. That is where most of the customers are, at least on this call. But if you have a specific case scenario, you want to deploy this in European Union or down under in Australia or in South Asia, uh, you can deploy these services confidently. The one thing which has changed recently, and uh, that was the requirement from our customer base, uh, the metadata location and that uh, specifically I'm talking about from the Canadian customer perspective uh, when we are deploying the AVD, the metadata location was not there to be deployed within the Canadian region, but now that has also changed. When you're deploying your host pool and your session host within that host pool, your metadata location for that AVD services can be also deployed within the Canadian region. And that option was always there for the US partners. You can have that uh, uh, deployment within uh, the metadata location within US. But this, these regions, they keep on growing. Uh, as I said that uh, Azure is dynamic, so Microsoft keeps on adding more and more data center, and I'm sure this services will continue to enhance in the future. Now, another 
important uh, uh, feature that has been added and went G actually uh, last month only was uh, dependencies of Azure Virtual Desktop on Azure Active Directory. Now, prior to, to this, uh, one of the prerequisites for AVD was that you need to have a domain services. You needed a domain controller. It can be on-prem or in the cloud. But with this option now, you can deploy a full cloud service. You can have Azure Virtual Desktop deployment with full Azure Active Directory integration. It means that uh, you no longer need a domain controller or domain services, whether it's on an IES or on a PaaS environment. So that's a great add-on. There was a, a lot of demand from our customer base because this is going to reduce the overall cost for you. So with now, you can confidently deploy Azure Virtual Desktop uh, with uh, cloud authentication only, with full integration with Azure Active Directory. And that also enables now your integration with the uh, Intune services, which is Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And as I said, that uh, licensing is one of the prerequisite for AVD. And if you have licensing such as Enterprise Mobility Security Suite like E3 or E5, then your Intune license also comes with that. And that aligns with the way this product is going. Uh, we want to make sure that we give you the cloud first experience. And uh, this is an example and the roadmap where it is going with the full integration of Azure Active Directory with Azure Virtual Desktop. And you can deploy this in Azure Portal if you want to test it out. Uh, it is there for you. Uh, you can deploy within uh, Azure Portal or through PowerShell. Another ask that was there for the customer and one of the recent feature was a start VM on Connect. As I said that uh, any cloud deployment is all about automation and scalability. What does that mean is we saw a lot of customers, uh, they were deploying these resources, but they were also putting automation scripts so say for example if you have a company which runs their businesses from monday to friday say 9 a.m to 5 p.m uh, and those machines are uh, shut down after those business hours but there was also a requirement in which there might be one user or there is a developer who needs to work outside those business hours and if those machines are shut down they won't be able to do their work now with this start vm to connect option this gives the capability to that users to start that VM and they can do their work without having to give them the admin access. So you still have the complete control as the admin administrator, uh, but this gives them the capability to start the VM from their side and they can do their work so that if they have to come outside their business hours, they can do. And this uh, feature is also available in the Azure portal. You can go and uh, make the changes in the RDP properties and uh, just by giving certain access at the VM level, uh, you'll be able to give uh, and provision start VM connect feature within Azure Virtual Desktop deployment. So great add on. If you have not used it, I will highly recommend to test this out. Now with AVD deployment, uh, user profile is going to be critical. And that is where the FS logics going to come into play. That is the underlying technologies. So with Azure Virtual Desktop deployment, you can deploy your resources two ways. You have a, a pool kind of environment in which multiple users will be sharing their desktop, or you can have a, a dedicated environment in which every user will have one-to-one -one relationship. So say, for example, if you have 50 users uh, in your organization, and if they don't require us to have 50 desktops, they can have a shared kind of environment in which you can deploy, say for example, five machines, and those five machines will be shared among 50 users. But that brings the question of how the user profiles are managed, and that is where FS Logic profile options uh, shines because everything is managed underneath by FS Logic technology. And this is the technology which Microsoft bought like two years ago. And in order to use the and store the user profile. There are different options. You can use this on a file server, a share on a file server. You can maybe use Netta files, and you can use Microsoft native services such as uh, Azure File Storage, which is a platform as a service, uh, which enables different tiers. You can have a hot, cool, transactional, optimized, or even premium tier. Depending upon what is the requirement of the customer, you can pick one over the other. And the good thing is that it fully integrates with your domain services. So if you have uh, 
Windows Active Directory that you are integrating with, or if you're using maybe Azure Active Directory domain services, FS Logix uh, fully integrates with that. So as users, they hop from one machine to another within the host pool, their user profile and their settings are taken with them, and that's fully stored within, say, for example, within Azure File Storage, uh, which is highly scalable, scalable. You don't need to worry about uh, uh, patches on that one or updating, and it is uh, highly available services. And as I said, that there are different tiers available. You can, uh, you can pick one over the other, depending upon your customer requirement. So how you want to start with AVD in case you want to just test it out, you want to deploy this. The first step will be how you want to manage your identity. So as I said that there might be on-prem infrastructure that you have, you want to integrate with this, how you want to manage the FS Logix profile, where you want to store the data. So we need to understand what's your identity strategy going to be, how you want to store your user profile. So that's going to be your first step. Uh, when we're trying to spin these services. After we have better understanding of how we want to do that, the next natural progression will be to create a subscription within a tenant. And for that, uh, you can use uh, Azure Resource Manager. You can configure this uh, FS Logix right from the portal or through, uh, or through command line interface or through PowerShell. There are different options available. And then once that uh, deployment has taken place, you have to manage this, which again, you can use uh, Microsoft uh, native capabilities, or you can tie up with some third party vendors to manage these resources. But these are the three steps going to be there in case you want to test this out. And the link that you see on the screen, uh, this is the Azure documentation page for Azure Virtual Desktop, which includes all the steps that are needed in order to spin these services. But I also want to point out uh, Ingram Micro through their cloud marketplace also has created some click to deploy solution for you where you can go and when you're spinning up your subscription, you can go and deploy these resources and within minutes, those services will be available for you. It's called Instant WVD. If you want to know more about those services, I will say uh, reach out to uh, the sales team and they will be more than happy in case you want to test this out and deploy this within minutes. Now, any cloud conversation, and even from the sales perspective, can uh, can lead you to the security, and that's why you want to spend time over here so that when you're having the conversation, because we saw that uh, sales teams are first line of defense, and when you're having that conversation, you, you should be confidently able to answer the security question. So I just want to take some moment here, explain what are the security capability and how it is uh, uh, blend in uh, with uh, Azure Virtual Desktop deployment. So before we look into the capabilities of AVD, just want to take a moment here explaining what kind of responsibility will be uh, on the customer when they are trying to deploy these services in cloud. And the best way to explain this is to compare that with your traditional on-prem virtual desktop. So as you can see on the left side under the blue category, when you're trying to deploy this in your physical data center, everything is your responsibility. You're responsible for that physical security, the networking, whether it's physical or virtualized, uh, the network, how it's going to flow, uh, whether you're using virtualized environment, whether it's VMware or Hyper-V, the operating system that you're going to use, Windows or Linux, and uh, everything up to the identity will be your responsibility when you're trying to deploy. Now, when you talking about Azure Virtual Desktop, it's a shared responsibility model. As you can see, uh, the one in the gray, we don't have physical access to those data centers, so we can't go and deploy those resources physically over there. So everything will be in a virtualized manner, in a in a in in form of virtual machine. So we don't have access to those physical data centers, so that is managed by Microsoft for you. So you don't need to worry about the physical host, the physical network, but still, we are in control of the network and the application that we're going to deploy on those ones. So that's our responsibility. So it's a shared responsibility model uh, where certain components are managed by Microsoft and certain components are managed uh, by uh, customer base.
Now, because the way AVD is uh, designed, it is meant to be used from anywhere. Right, and it is critical that we have uh, those tools in place and multi-factor authentication is one of the capabilities which is built in within Azure Virtual Desktop deployment. Now, multi-factor authentication used to be a, a paid option. You need to have a paid service from Azure Active Directory perspective, but that is not the case. Now, even with a free option, you can use uh, multi-factor, though when you go with the premium version of uh, uh, Azure Active Directory like Premium 1 and Premium 2, it unlocks more capabilities, but uh, you can enable multi-factor authentication when users are trying to access. You can ask them to authenticate uh, via a phone or through Authenticator app. There are different ways you can do this. And you can further enhance the security by using the conditional access policy. So say, for example, if you have a corporate environment, uh, you can uh, make this conditional access policy uh, enabled so that when they're trying to access that from the court network, it doesn't ask them for that extra authentication or MFA. And say, for example, if they're trying to access outside of their corporate network, say from their home, and these are mobile users or even through a coffee shop, uh, that conditional access policy will kick in and it will ask you to authenticate uh, by using any of the options such as the phone or the authenticator app uh, on those homes, right? But uh, this is critical. These options, you can deploy this when you're trying to implement ABD for your corporate network user or even for your mobile users. And this just gives you a demonstration of uh, how multi-factor authentication is going to work. So when they are trying to uh, log in into uh, the application that has been given access to them, it will ask them to authenticate or second factor authentication. In this case, it is the Authenticator app which is asking them to. Further looking into the security, uh, as I said that uh, network is your responsibility and how the data is going to flow, uh, you can manage this and you have a complete control. So when you're deploying these resources, you have to configure the virtual network, which is the segmentation of uh, uh, what you're going to deploy within Azure environment. And there are different tiers of security you can provide uh, at the network level. For example, uh, there's a reverse connect, that is the uh, that is how you're going to connect to these uh, services within Azure. But uh, from the firewall perspective, there are a couple of options which are free and some of the options they are paid. For example, you have NSG Firewall Service Tag, which stands for Network Security Group, which is a layer four kind of uh, firewall. So you can specify uh, the internet protocol from the source and the destination IPs from where the traffic is uh, allowed. And you can also specify the traffic enabled on specific ports, so that can be deployed by using NSG Firewall. And if you want to go even a step further, you can deploy Azure Firewall, which is a platform as a service, and uh, you can drill down more at the application level. And the good thing is that you don't have to manage in a way that it is uh, highly scalable. So as the traffic increases, it can, uh, it can uh, increase its, uh, 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 the nodes in the backend. But there are different levels of security that you can apply at the network level. As I said, that NSG is free. If you want to use maybe paid services from Azure, you can use Azure Firewall, which is a PaaS offering. Or if you feel more comfortable and you have expertise on some of the other uh, third-party appliance, which you can deploy as a network virtual appliance, such as uh, Cisco, Juniper, or Barracuda, that is also there, and that is also fully compatible with Azure Virtual Desktop. And there's one service that you need as a system admin so that uh, you can manage the complete infrastructure that is going to be your Azure Security Center. Azure Security Center comes in two tier. You have a free tier, which is uh, unlocked out of the box for you when you spin up your subscription. And the paid option is your Azure Defender, which used to be called a standard option within Azure Security Center. I call this as a health score. Basically, it will give you an idea about uh, uh, how your infrastructure is, uh, is, is configured, and you can have uh, different uh, categories for that based on compute, the storage, and the identity, and it will give you recommendation that uh, this is the implementation that you need to make to increase your security score, and there's built-in intelligence in the back end Microsoft is using it. It's reaching basically its reach artificial intelligence to provide you with those alerts, 
and then you can take uh, preventive actions uh, as per the requirement. And as you can see uh, on the right side of the stack, these are some of the security best practices that you can go uh, through this documentation. But definitely recommend that uh, we should have uh, Azure uh, Defender, which is a paid option within Azure Security Center from the system admin perspective so that they get a bird's eye view of what is happening, not only in the AVD environment, some of the other services that you might be deploying within your Azure subscription. So as I said that uh, when you're having these conversations, security, uh, there are so many different components to that. We talked about the identity, the user who's going to access basically from anywhere. So we need to enable maybe multi-factor authentication or conditional access policy for them. We also need to take into consideration the session host that we are deploying within that host pool. So are we putting in any antivirus and what policies we are putting in for that one? Maybe we need to put uh, uh, antivirus from third party. So we need to also look into if you feel more comfortable with any of those services, you can deploy that too. But we need to have some sort of protection for our session host and also for the applications that we'll be deploying. Maybe we we'll want to use MSIX app attached for those applications and the way we deliver. And uh, infrastructure I talked about, maybe positioning Azure Security Center and best practices, which is uh, recommended by Microsoft for AVD deployment. And then we have the networking component, how you want that network traffic to flow. You can use uh, network security groups, which is, as I said, that is a layer four uh, uh, firewall, which works at the transport layer, or maybe you can use Azure Firewall uh, to manage that network traffic. And the data which is being generated which is sitting on those uh, VHDs within that virtual machine or even on the storage account for the user profiles. So there are different components uh, of uh, security and the conversation we can have. But the important thing is that uh, we have all these tools in place and AVD integrates with different components, uh, whether it's Microsoft 365 or, uh, or Azure Native Solution. And you can provide this complete solution end-to-end -end security from identity to data. Uh, to make these services secure for them. At this stage, I'm going to uh, now talk about some of the use case scenarios where you can uh, uh, align these services. And these are some of the verticals that uh, come across in the conversation. So some of them you might be already dealing with, such as financial industry, the industry which are regulated, which have uh, specific requirements, health sector, education, we're going to look into uh, detail one by one. Uh, but regardless of any verticals on the left side, that's where the uh, managed services portion will come into play from desktop as a service. So, so you're deploying these Windows 10 multi-sessions in cloud and that needs to be assessed and needs to be migrated, and then you can use your own uh, native in-house team in order to achieve that. And if that application that they are running on-prem, that needs to be virtualized to make it compatible maybe with uh, uh, the new way of deploying uh, RDS services such as AVD, uh, that is where the expertise of our MSPs will come into play. And you might be dealing with some uh, niche market in which uh, you need to deploy uh, some uh, graphic intensive workload on, on Azure. Azure also has uh, uh, NVIDIA GeForce X rated machines such as N-Series virtual machine, which you can deploy. And we're gonna talk about these desktop as a service uh, in, in a moment, uh, and then we'll deep into dive into the different verticals that it caters to. So let's talk about the management and operation and compliance of security quickly here. So any deployment that you're going to do for AVD that needs to be administrated uh, uh, on an ongoing basis, it is no different from what you deploy generally on-prem. And this can be provided as part of your desktop as a service in which if a user needs some help, they're not able to log in, you will, uh, you will have some sort of mechanism in which uh, uh, they can raise a ticket. You also need to have implementation in place so that you can manage images. So in case there are different versioning or you need to patch it or you need to update. So these will come under the management and operation. And we already talked about the compliance and security where you will enable the multi-factor authentication for your users. Uh, and you can uh, uh, configure your machine in a way that they are not able to deploy any 
uh, unauthorized software that they are not supposed to do it right. And depending upon their accessing their data from corporate environment or from a remote access, you can manage the security, you can apply conditional access policy, and this can be part of desktop as a service. Now, contrary to the belief that the data is in the cloud or your infrastructure in the cloud, a lot of people, they believe that they still, they don't need to worry about uh, uh, high availability or data protection. But uh, as I said that in the slide of uh, shared responsibility model, we still need to make sure that these services are up and running. We need to make it highly available and the data which is being generated by these applications, whether these are user profile or the application data, we still need to protect that. So we need to have uh, uh, solutions such as Azure Site Recovery or Azure Backup in place. So it's in case something happens, we are able to go back and restore to point in time. Uh, so we need to have those solutions in place. And that is another a component which can be part of your managed service provider. And you can uh, leverage with this with, uh, to provide a complete solution with desktop as a service. And then on an ongoing basis, we need to diagnose this and we need to troubleshoot this. So we need to have a monitoring solution in place. Uh, for example, a lot of our customers, they use Nerdio uh, to monitor this uh, on an ongoing basis. But if you want to use Azure Native Solution, Azure Monitoring, which give you uh, diagnostic reporting, which you can utilize, and will also give you the troubleshooting that you can do, which is going to be on an ongoing basis. But the point here is that uh, this is going to be part of your managed service boy uh, services that you can unlock with Azure Virtual Desktop. Automation is critical uh, with any cloud deployment because you're charged for how long these services are running. And if you have a case scenario in which your customers need only those resources during specific time or during specific days within a week or in a month, then definitely you should use Azure Automation where you are able to uh, remove these resources and provision these resources on demand. So auto scaling based on off peak and on peak demand will be critical. So that's going to be another component that can be brought into the conversation. And uh, a virtualization of application, we can subscribe the machine image that and load the applications, but there are some new ways of deploying these uh, application within Azure Virtual Desktop, such as by utilizing MSIX app attach, which reduce the dependencies of managing your uh, images. Basically, that is your containerization of applications, so that can be something additional services that you can offer as part of your desktop as a service. And because the way AVD is uh, meant to be consumed, it should be accessible from anywhere. It can be accessed from uh, web access. You can have uh, Android, iOS, or Linux machine. So you should be able to still manage these resources, and that is where the Intune will come into play, which you can restrict or allow specific operating system that can be uh, that can be used by the users. So that can be all done through. Uh, through the uh, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, which is Intune. And then you can also use FS logics maybe to containerize your user profiles and even your application by using MSIX app attach. So this can be again part of your complete desktop as a service offering that you can give to your customer. Now for all the benefits that we have talked about so far, your assets, your data will be still secured, and you can use uh, Azure top of line security in collaboration with Microsoft 365. Now, while talking to the customer, they are already appreciating some of the uh, some of the uh, features which are there already within Azure Virtual Desktop, such as Reverse Connect. Uh, you have Azure AD authentication now, and you can also domain join these virtual machine. And Microsoft keeps on adding more and more services. As I said that. Cloud is always dynamic. AVD services is always constantly changing. They are making it secure and more reliable. They keep on adding more and more feature. And the roadmap is that to make it totally cloud without having any dependencies on-prem. That is where we are going. But you can see over here that uh, uh, 
we can have specific access to the users based on their user profile, based on what kind what kind of implementation they can do by using role based access control. You can drill down into owner, contributor, or reader access, but you can use components within Azure and you can use component within Microsoft 365 to complete this uh, ecosystem and uh, provision these services with Azure Virtual Desktop. Let's look into some of the verticals or some of the uh, case scenarios that will come across based on what industry they are dealing with. And financial industry is one of the industry that is security conscious. And for a good reason, as a data breach or cyber attack within the industry can cost millions of dollars for a business and erode a lot of uh, trust for customer for years to come. Now, if you're using a VDA solution, uh, you can keep all the information secure and makes it easier to deploy these compliant desktop to workers, right? Regardless of the device or even if they are temporary contractors, because we see that, you know, uh, the workforce is always changing, so you don't need to deploy the resources 24-7 for these users, right? So through AVD, it is also possible that you can limit what user can do on a VM. I talked about uh, uh, what access you want to give these two users to. They can only have uh, uh, access to just consume. They won't be needing any administrative access, so we can drill down to that level. And we can also restrict that they are not transferring any data or accessing system that they are not allowed to. So only specific machine that they are assigned to, they can access that. And if uh, there's a requirement, they can copy the data out of the uh, virtual network within Azure. So you can drill down and make restriction. And that is one of the requirements for our financial services uh, segment, uh, which you can deploy with this uh, AVD. Another case scenario that we come across is the education sector. And for ed many educational establishments, especially for school, it is difficult that they can procure enough machine for each student. And it is also costly for them to update the hardware. Now, when it comes to obsolete, some schools offer, they, they offer bring, bring your own devices program, right? But this can be a major security if they're letting them bring their own devices because uh, these unsecured devices are connecting to your network. Now with Azure Virtual Desktop deploy, Deployment, now you can allow schools to able to procure these low cost hardware with less computing power, right? You don't have to give them the top of the line, uh, top of the line machine. You can just give them low cost hardware with less computing power because this processing now is doing done in the, in the virtual desktop infrastructure. Now, similarly with bring your own devices program, now users, ABD can end users the same experience regardless of their devices, right? So each device has the same increased security measures uh, of a school issued machine. So whether they're bringing, bringing your own devices, whether, uh, whether they are accessing these from a specific operating system, you have this capability of managing it. And we constantly see this within the education sector. And you can put these uh, uh, security measures in place to restrict what they can do with these uh, bring their own devices. So very critical, especially from, from the education point of view. Now, one of the key aspect of the healthcare industry that differentiated from the other industries is that the amount of sensitive data and confidential file that these data are stored, that, that they are storing basically. Now with Azure Virtual Desktop, it is also possible now for you to set rules and permission that allows only certain users to view information. Now, another reason why AVD is well suited to health industry is that within a VD, VDI, you no data is stored on the device, right? So they can use their own devices, but they're not storing any device. We can restrict that. Uh, and all these computation is basically happening in the cloud. Now, Azure has some of the most secure data storage and can include like multi-factor authentication. You can enable maybe uh, your in-depth threat and vulnerability management to assure all patients' data will remain in the right hands. So health sector is very sensitive to these, uh, these conversation, but the securities that are there in place will make sure that, uh, again, that data doesn't leave uh, those virtual network. It is still within that uh, boundary. You can restrict the network traffic 
how these users are interacting with it uh, to give them the optimal performance, but at the same time, keeping the data for the patient secure. Now, manufacturing industry is another uh, another use case scenario where we can bring Azure Virtual Desktop in the conversation, and uh, they differ from whatever the previous option that we discussed in a way that these manufacturing industry they deal with high volume employees, but at the same time they don't have to use all these devices at the same time. Now, this means that these manufacturing industry can have fewer devices with AVD allowing employees to log in when they need to do work, now increasing their productivity. At the same time, that will also help to reduce the hardware cost. Now, regardless of the industry uh, or the deployment of the scenario that we talked about, now AVD can offer like, you know, plethora of benefits. We can go on and on to many businesses, whether it's for security, flexibility, whether we want to scale those uh, environment or cost saving. A uh, virtual desktop infrastructure solution like AVD can fundamentally basically change, uh, you know, the way your business uh, consider their IT infrastructure. Now, the solution for AVD does just not restrict, as I said that, you know, to these verticals. There's some other, uh, you know, case scenario where you have deployed your traditional RDS uh, infrastructure where you can replace this with AVD. And as I said that, if they already have some of the licensing, uh, and they are not utilizing, they are uh, leaving the money on the table, I will say, right? Because that is there for them to be used and you can give them modern way of deploying these services and much more secured way of implementing these services on the Azure. So definitely reach out to our uh, uh, technical team, which can take this conversation further. And you can also leverage your cloud marketplace, Ingram Micro Cloud Marketplace to deploy these services. If you're doing it for POC, such as instant WVD, and they will be more than happy to spin that for you. Well, at this time, I'm just going to go to the Azure portal, just to give you an idea about how the user experience is going to be. I'm already logged in to Azure portal with my credential, as you can see, and uh, I'm going to search I've already pinned this under my favorite bar. And I've already have a host pool in place with the name IMC. You can see the location of this, right? Under what subscription it is. And it's in a pool kind of environment. And if I go and expand this, you can see in this host pool, I have two machines. So there are two machines running. You can have uh, n number of machines depending on the customer requirements, right? And uh, if I can show you, these are two machines. They are in available state right now, and I can give access to the users. If I can go under my application group, I have only one application group, IMC desktop application group, which has been assigned to the user. If I can go and expand this, the manage, you can see I have the assignments. And here you can give access to the users of the group in your organization. You can just go and click on add button. And uh, whatever user you want to give access, you can give from here. You can also remove the access for the users and you can remove it, right? But as you can see on this screen, I have two users to which this desktop application group has been enabled. So I'm going to access this resources with a username test one. And uh, this can be accessed from any device basically. But for this, I'm going to use HTML5. And uh, hopefully, I password. In my case, I have not enabled uh, any conditional access policy. 
uh, but those options can be enabled for added security. So as you can see that uh, test one user is able to access uh, the desktop application group and you can see the FS logic app service has kicked in. So because this is in a pooled environment, so user profiles is going to be critical. So uh, if they're accessing one machine and tomorrow if they come, they will be uh, logging on to other machine, their user profiles and everything will be taken with them. And that is the beauty of uh, this FS logics user profile that is underlying technology that uh, Microsoft is using. But you can see that the experience was seamless and uh, this machine is going to boot up. You can obviously change the instance size. You can increase uh, what kind of compute node or power you want and whatever application has been uh, given to these users, they will see all these application and uh, they will be able to do their business uh, the way do it maybe on-prem from their corporate network or even from the remote location if they want to. So with this uh, brings us to the end of this uh, presentation. I know we went a little bit uh, over time, uh, but the, hopefully this gives you an idea about how you can position and what are the core capabilities of Azure Virtual Desktop. But we want to take this a step further. The idea behind this session is to enhance your managed services portfolio, right? And uh, develop your marketplace offering. As you know that uh, within Azure Cloud Marketplace, you can put your own uh, offering based on your uh, based on uh, your expertise. Maybe you want to deploy the infrastructure. You want to deploy maybe monitoring services on an uh, on an ongoing basis. You want to provide maybe backup services. So based on that, uh, you can create your own marketplace offering and uh, uh, so that you know user can come and deploy these resources. It will automatically integrate with you and then you can take it from there. But uh, these are the three uh, links uh, we begin to share with you after this presentation. So the first one is the WBD Get Started. As I said that uh, this gives you, uh, take you to the Azure documentation page for Azure Virtual Desktop and you have all the documentation here, how to deploy it, what are the best practices. The second link is for the WBD Experience Estimator. So basically, depending upon uh, which region you want to deploy, you want to give them the optimal performance, so you can test the latency by going into this uh, uh, experience estimator link. And uh, you also have the WVD pricing uh, link here. So in case you want to price this out scenario, which we're going to talk about uh, tomorrow, actually, that's going to be one of the segments that we're going to discuss. Uh, but these are the three links definitely going to be handy. Uh, and I will recommend everybody to go through this one to get some more information and to uh, enhance your knowledge on Azure Virtual Desktop. So with this brings us to the end of this uh, session. If anybody has any question or any comment, we'll be happy to take. Thanks, Karish. Um, I just wanted to share for Thursdays lab um it'll be day three of the immersion days we do have a lab environment for one one lab environment per partner um and that is really for the technical person on your team so if you can have them join on the third day uh, we greatly appreciate it and also after this um i will send out the recording um from the session awesome uh do we see any question in the in the in the chat Um, we did have a question from Anthony. He said, quick question, why AVD instead of Windows 365 Enterprise? I'm trying to understand the use case for AVD instead of provisioning W365 Enterprise. Uh, that's, a, that's a great question, actually. And uh, for those of us, maybe uh, Windows 365 is a new uh, offering from Microsoft, right? Uh, I have not uh, used it personally. But that's a great question, uh, how you compare that with Azure Virtual Desktop. Now, one difference I can tell you uh, is that uh, Windows 365, this cloud PC, uh, has two, two options, right? One is for the enterprise and one for the business. 
with Azure Virtual Desktop, you have this option of deploying your resources within pool as well as in personal. But in that uh, Windows 365, the only option which is there is to deploy that in a dedicated. So you're going to have a one to one relationship, right? Uh, so if you are in a in a scenario in which you want to give, maybe if you have 100 users and they don't need to have that uh, requirement to have 100 uh, machines deployed for them, you can definitely use Azure Virtual Desktop. But if that's not the case, I think the one that Anthony mentioned can can be can be leveraged over there. So it will depend upon uh, what scenario that we're talking about. So that's uh, that's a, another good option that you can utilize. And another thing. While talking with the customer, some of these customers, uh, you know, they don't want the fluctuation. So AVD, basically, you have more control. You have administrative accesses, the way you want to manage and configure those machines. That might not be the case within uh, that Windows 365 option, right? You don't have that administrative uh, access to those machines. Yes, those machines are there in Cloud PC. But if you want a standardized pricing, you don't want that uh, pricing to fluctuate a lot. That is a good option, but again, as I said, we need to have more uh, deeper conversation of which service will fit in what case scenario. But yes, definitely that's on also one of the option which is there along with Azure Virtual Desktop. Hopefully that answers the question. We do have another question in the chat um, in the demo. Was that using on prem AD or only Azure AD? If Azure AD are there are there additional licensing requirements to leveraging FS logics? Right. So in my case, I was using uh, Azure Active Directory domain services, right? And actually, I can show that to you. Uh, so you can use uh, on-prem Active Directory if you want. If you're using on-prem Active Directory, then you need to have a site-to-site -site or VPN connectivity. If you're using uh, Active Directory as an infrastructure, so say, for example, as on a virtual machine, uh, then you can deploy and you can uh, sync uh, users from your uh, Active Directory virtual machine running within Azure. But in my case, I'm using Azure Active Directory domain services. Right here. This is a service that I'm using, uh, which is basically uh, an highly level solution for uh, Azure Active Directory domain services, uh, for, for on-prem Active Directory or Windows, traditional Windows Active Directory. And sorry, there was a question about the FS logics. Sorry, I missed that. What was that? Oh, the second question. If Azure AD, are there additional licensing requirements to leverage FS logics? So the licensing slide that I showed you, if you have any of those licensing, FS logics will come with that license. So you don't need any separate licensing for FS logics of storing those user profiles for you. Cool, thank you. It sounds like you answered both Anthony and Russell's questions. Awesome. So once again, really appreciate everybody taking time. Uh, we went a little bit over time, so sorry about that. Uh, but tomorrow we're going to focus more on the design and the sizing session. So we're going to go and look at the architecture and we'll also go walk you through the pricing calculator. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would recommend all the system architects to join tomorrow. And then as uh, Trish mentioned, day three will be a uh, hands-on lab. It's, an, uh, it's a full day session starting at 9 a.m. Uh, so I will recommend schedule your meetings and everything accordingly. But yeah, that's going to be another fun day. Uh, the day three will be deploying all the components uh, required for AVD right from scratch. Great, thank you Girish and everyone for joining. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.